Now, other than the doctors and lecturers strike, President Uhuru Kenyatta has appeared noticeably quiet over the recent deadly terror attack on Kenyan Defense Forces KDF camp in Kulbio, Somalia. The president has not spoken publicly or condoled with the bereaved six days after the attack. NTV's Brenda Wanga has more. On the dawn of Friday, 27th of January 2017, the KDF base in Kulbio, Somalia came under attack from Al Shabaab militants. That attack left scores of Kenyan soldiers dead, others injured. On the 28th, President Uhuru Kenyatta boarded the presidential plane for the AU summit, having made no statement on the attack, the dead, or the wounded. The agenda of the meeting in Addis, the election of the African Union Commission chairperson, a position that Foreign Cabinet Secretary Amina Mohamed was vying. In Addis, neither the president nor his spokesman spoke about the sad events back home. On his return from Addis Ababa, President Kenyatta landed in Mombasa and went straight into a vote hunting spree at the coast. It was back to politics as usual. The lack of reaction to the attack and the subsequent deaths in Somalia are perhaps the best example of what official disinterest and neglect looks like, especially coming from the office of the man who is directly responsible for the well-being of all Kenyans and particularly of soldiers, this fact in the line of duty as those in Somalia are. But it isn't the first and the only case where the president has been missing in action in matters of defense and security. In the wake of the 2014 November Mandera bus attack, where 28 people were killed, the president didn't change his travel plans. He boarded his plane and proceeded to the UAE Abu Dhabi to ostensibly meet with leaders there to discuss, amongst other things, ways of handling the terror threat. The country's rage was so palpable that when the next attack happened a week later in the same area, he cancelled a planned trip to Angola to address the issue, this time personally. When the Al-Shabaab struck again in Garissa, although the president addressed the nation almost immediately, he did not meet with the families of the bereaved or the survivors. The backlash that followed forced the president to make amends by writing personal letters to the affected families. The al Adi attack early last year saw the president react more responsively, not only speaking out against the attack, but personally visiting and condoling with the victims in their hospital beds. Consoling families of fallen soldiers is traditionally a role taken seriously by commanders in chief the world over. On Tuesday, U.S. President Trump recently flew to the home of the family of a Navy SEAL killed in last week's fateful Yemen operation to personally condole with the family. Back home, soldiers and families affected in the Kubio terror attack may well be watching as a commander in chief pushes for registration of voters and subsequently his re election bid. Of course, those two stories that we have so far uh, form the basis of our conversation with our guests who are already here uh, to comment. Of course, the, these are leaders were of the county governments and I have with me Jonathan Mweke who is the deputy governor of Nairobi. Also I have Abdi Yaro who is the deputy governor of Wajia. Also we have with us Mr. Gakure who is the deputy governor of Moranga. We eagerly are waiting for Dorothy uh, to join us much much later. This is Dorothy Nditi who is the deputy governor of Embo. Good morning gentlemen. Morning. Good morning. Right. Thank you for joining us this morning on M Live Leadership Forum. Of course, we are going to be hearing about you on leadership and delegation much, much later on the, in the course of a program. But looking at the events so far that we've had uh, with the KDF uh, attack in the, the attack in Somalia, Kulbio, and also the looming drought that is happening in the country, and there's a lot of activity. Some uh, frogs, you know, they're jumping in the air right now. Do you think the government has given the right perspective in terms of addressing these issues? Right? We've had just from our reporter. Uh, Brenda Wanga, that yes, the, the president so far has not even condoled uh, with the bereaved family of the KDF soldiers who you know passed on during uh, the attack in uh, Somalia. Let's begin with you, uh, Abe. Uh, uh, really, I think uh, <coughs> the government is not responding adequately to what's happening at the moment because I think it is maybe only in Kenya where we are so much concentrating on those in this voter registration and a lot of politicking mm -hmm. and talking about elections. Yes. 
Uh, and yet uh, the doctors are out there, the t now the lecturers are striking, uh, and, uh, and, and the attack that has happened. So I think these things actually should be of more concern than the better registration that uh, every leader is shouting about it at the moment. So I feel uh, somehow we are not responding to the real issues as required. All right. Uh, Jonathan Mweke. Yeah, I think uh, especially on the soldiers uh, that lost their lives in Kolboyo, um, we've said it has called many, many times that I think it's time to rethink Somalia. Mm -hmm. You know, we went into Somalia for a reason, a very good reason, in, uh, during the Grand Coalition government. It was Operation Linda Inchi, yes. because the Al-Shabaab had come and started attacking uh, our borders, kidnapping tourists and citizens, and we went in so that we can secure Somalia, weaken the Al-Shabaab, and hand it over to uh, strengthen the Somalian government and hand over uh, a more secure Somalia to the government. So KDF, with uh, its professionalism and its skill and its braveness, went into Somalia. It secured Somalia, including Kismayu, where most of the resources of Al-Shabaab came from. Yes. And um, they didn't hand it over to the government that is elected in Somalia. Uh, so we are now occupying Somalia, and I think that's where we are getting all, this, all, all these problems. Um, I think there's also a problem with intelligence, because you can't have, honestly, one or two hundred people walking towards your camp, and with all the technology you have as an army, you can't see them coming. Uh, so there should have also been a problem in, uh, in, in Somalia. On other national issues like drought, we've spoken about it uh, uh, a lot. Drought is a planning um, it's, it's a planning issue. We know there's going to be a drought at least once every four years. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the Constitution, Chapter um, the Schedule 4, um, on the, uh, the, the um, uh, functions of governments, uh, number 26, uh, disaster management is the function of the national government. So they need to wake up and be able to do what they, they need to do. Uh, on the doctors, you know, our position as county governments has been very simple. 80% of the doctors are employees of the county governments. Mm -hmm. uh, the deal was signed when county governments were in place. The, do the, the governors were not, were, were, not re were, were not consulted on the same. Mm -hmm. uh, so the national government really needs to take responsibility for its actions. Uh, health is a devolved function. And even now they've been engaging the doctors without uh, the county government's input. So I'm not sure how you'll be able to resolve it. You've seen doctor strikes in various counties, including Nairobi, where we had a doctor strike uh, because of promotions and welfare and other issues just around November. It lasted less than seven days, mm -hmm. and we resolved it. So two months, really, we should be able to get our doctors back to work. But still, you've not really answered my question. Uh, the president has not reacted to the attack in, in Somalia. Yeah, I, I say the in government needs to take leadership. Mm -hmm. on, on some of these national issues. Uh, we see the president going around all over the place uh, asking people to register to vote. But how do you vote if you don't have a country to begin with? So the government really needs to prioritize. The president needs to, to realize that he swore Thank you. an oath to be able to solve some of these national issues. So he shouldn't ignore them. He should come back to Nairobi, uh, take care of the national issues so that we see some leadership in this country. Thank you. Let's hear from uh, Gakure Monyo, who is the deputy governor of Moranga. Uh, well, uh, we wouldn't say that the President Ron has not uh, responded to this because, as you know, after the attack, uh, the Commander-in-Chief uh, uh, or Chief of General Staff did go to uh, Somalia and uh, some senior defense uh, support people. And all we can say, yes, the President might not have, uh, have said, but the channels of governance which have uh, addressed this. Issues of uh, security are managed in a different way than uh, every, not every common man would understand. And, uh, Information from uh, military at times is uh, is uh, handled in a different way that uh, not all of us will tackle. And uh, I believe it is very sad that we've lost another set of uh, of our soldiers, like it did happen again last year. And we should ask ourselves a question: If we, if the Amazon forces left uh, Somalia, mm -hmm. hence what would happen to the countries in the neighboring? I think for the safety. Uh, of the neighboring countries, Kenya and the others, we should remain, the Kenya soldiers and the Amazon soldiers should remain in, uh, in Somalia mm -hmm. until when uh, Somalia is governable. Unti until Somalia is governable, living there, 
would I think still leave Al Shabaab and the terror groups uh, free at large to keep attacking? All right, let's hear from uh, Abdi, especially in Wajir, with a looming drought. How severe is your county affected? Uh, actually, the drought is quite biting now because uh, it is, it's, it's really bad. The situation is quite bad. Uh, fortunately, I think uh, since uh, the incept of the county governments, uh, we are able to mitigate mm -hmm. so much in terms of trying to deliver water to the people. Because uh, if I believe if there were no county government by now, mm -hmm. most of our animals could have been dead by, for lack of water. But uh, it's really uh, putting a lot of pressure on the county governments, trying to give, uh, trying to track water to where the animals are, to where the people are. But it's quite biting, and uh, we have managed, but there's a lot of pressure because the boreholes are breaking down. You see, the, 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 the tracking is becoming far and far because the animals are going all the way to look for pasture. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pressure. But uh, if it continues maybe another two months, then I think uh, it's going to be quite bad. And uh, unfortunately, the national government is like it's leaving these things to the counties. Yes. And yet it is, as uh, my colleague has put it, it is their mandate. It is their responsibility to mitigate and, you know, the disaster management is their responsibility. Mm -hmm. However, it's like uh, it's not taking that role as seriously as required. Therefore, the county governments are trying. They are trying to take water to all these places, trying, you know, trying to mitigate that. But uh, it's quite bad. It's quite bad. In the next two months, I think it's going to be, uh, it's going to be quite dangerous. Is but, it a matter uh, of a too little, too late? Uh, could be, because uh, up to now, actually, we have nothing much to say that... Uh, there is help that is coming from the national government. But, but I, I presume from, the, from, from, from your government, you yes. also have the Ministry of Agriculture, yes. isn't it? Yes. So how have you been working in tandem also with the with national government to make sure also that we have a sufficient food supply in your county? Uh, uh, really, we cannot say that uh, uh, we cannot say that we have sufficient food supply even as a, as a county as such. Because uh, uh, the matter of fact is that this no, thing the is question planned. is, how, how have you been effectively working with the national government to make sure that you have sufficient food within your county, right? You okay, saw this right was, was coming. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, what I get you. Uh -huh. We have been trying to cooperate with the national government as much as possible to ensure that uh, these things are mitigated. But, you know, this is a planning and it's a process. And the, and the national government issues are always very, uh, very slow, everything. Every action that's taken is quite slow. Maybe you agree on things, but... Uh, action to be taken, what needs to be done, or the, the results mm -hmm. are not forthcoming because it's always uh, very, there's a lot of bureaucracy in this, uh, in, right. in, the, in, in, in trying to work with the national oh, okay. government. Okay, let's say from uh, Jonathan, of course, we know also we in the city, it's a concrete jungle. Uh, what tidy sum of money is allocated to the Ministry of Agriculture within Nairobi County? Because I, I know it's, it, could, it could be a surprise for many Kenyans, also Nairobians, to know that you have a Ministry of Agriculture. So what do you normally do with that money? Um, agriculture in Nairobi is more on uh, urban, urban agriculture, and what we do is uh, we've set up milk processing plants so that young people around the city can be able to uh, process milk. People don't know that a lot of dairy farming is done around the current area and the great areas of Nairobi and produces uh, quite a substantial amount of milk for this country. So we have milk processes so that in the informal settlements people can be able to process their own milk and sell it. Uh, we also have what we So where exactly do we have these uh, milk processes and who uh, are the beneficiaries of, our, of this steady sum of money in current? Yes. Uh, the milk processors are in Ruai, they're in Dagoreti, they're in Kawangware, they're in Kangemi, they're in Kibera, uh, they're in other areas on the east side of Nairobi like the Dandora and Kayole. And what we did is the county government bought those, trained youth groups and created businesses for them to be able to do that. Uh, the market for the milk is there, it's about processing, adding value to the milk and selling it. Then we also have uh, what we call uh, urban gardens where we set up uh, gardens in sacks, in gunias. Uh, for subsistence farming. Uh, and if you have your own gunia garden in your house or where you live, you're able to feed a family of three uh, with either skuma wiki, other vegetables, and so on and so forth. So that's a project that's been very, very successful. We piloted it in, uh, in Kibera and in Madare, and it's really been able to engage, uh, engage our youth 
We also did 17 greenhouses, one per every sub-county. Uh, the gestation period of the greenhouses that do either tomatoes, watermelons, uh, capsicums, and uh, peppers and so on and so forth is about six months. So we've seen uh, youth take uh, loans, which again we funded as the county, mm -hmm. set up some of those greenhouses and been able to uh, um, uh, build and, uh, their businesses by planting stuff selling it to the markets, Wakulima, and so on and so forth, and making a limit out of it. So for us, agriculture in Nairobi is more agribusiness, and there's a little aspect of subsistence farming where people are able to feed themselves from what they grow in their backyards. Yeah, could, could you just give us a ballpark figure of how much money is allocated to the Ministry of Agriculture? Uh, out of our budget of $34 billion, about 1.5 billion shillings was allocated to agriculture. Uh, one of the very important things uh, that we are doing right now, we're just waiting for the land to come through, is we're going to build a uh, poultry abattoir. Uh, you know, a lot of chicken is consumed in, in this city. It comes from all over the country, uh, but we don't have a safe and hygienic way to slaughter and package that, uh, that, that, that chicken. So we are setting up, up in Rwai. We've been looking for the land, a very modern uh, abattoir. For, 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 for slaughtering chicken so that we can export it mm -hmm. and we can also ensure that the chicken that people in Nairobi are consuming. All right, the Ministry of uh, uh, Treasury has been also taking special umbrage with, uh, with the county governments that you're actually stashing away money in the banks instead of allocating these monies to projects, of which many of you have totally denied this, uh, that money is not lying idly in banks to accrue interest, right? Let's, let's begin from, from Moranga, uh, first of all. <coughs> Uh, do you also hold with this view from the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Treasury? You know, there is this misconception of how county governments operate. And it's uh, ideal for people to understand that uh, the county governments operate in a reimbursement uh, way of uh, money expenditure. Uh, after budgeting the monies, then you contract for the jobs to be done. And that's at the point when you request for the monies from Central Bank to come into the current expenditure account in the county and then pay the suppliers. So the notion that the monies are not uh, being utilized is, is something that might not be cr cr critically correct because then the monies are not sitting with the county government. The monies are sitting in the, in the central bank and the process of uh, acquiring that money for reimbursement is what takes a little longer. Mm -hmm. A case in point is when um, you have budgeted for some long-term uh, investment. And the process, for example, construction of a factory will take two, three years. Uh, you will find that the money will be budgeted in year one, but cannot be spent all of it because it is spent on certif certification of completion of the, of, uh, the works. So if uh, some 20, 30% of a job is completed, mm -hmm. that's the only money that can come back. The rest of the money will come on when the certifications for the construction are come, th come through. All right. Jonathan? Yeah, I think it's just one of those things where... Uh, let's see from Abdi, then we come to you. Uh, okay. Actually, <laughs> on, this, on the issue of money, it is really very interesting because, uh, uh, first of all, if the money is lying in the bank, it's lying with the central bank, with the treasurer. So if anybody is getting interest, it's the, it's the, it's the national government. No, it's, it's, it's been alleged that actually you, you, you stash your money with the commercial banks. No, no, no. It doesn't no, we, that we, we had a case of... Uh, of uh, um, this particular chess banker, which uh, was going down the tubes, and a lot of governors were affected with their monies uh, in the, in, in, uh, with chess bank. Maybe personal personal money, but I don't I don't think of any county money that has been that has gone with chess bank. I'm not aware of any. I don't know whether my colleagues will are aware of that. But uh, what I know is that the money is with the is the, is the, is the treasury. Is the, with the actually these days what happens? Even payments are done directly from the treasury account, from the central bank accounts that the county government holds. There's no much. There's no money in the commercial banks as such. And uh, what's really happening is that, as he has really aptly put it, uh, when payments are done, it is the central, we instruct through the IFME system, the central bank to pay the supplier directly. Yes. It doesn't pass through any commercial bank of the county government. Yes. Uh, but what is really happening is that uh, this money actually delay because it happens that most of the time maybe the national government does not have even the cash. Because as we speak now, uh, like uh, my county, I remember the last time they got any money to pay any 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 project expenditure or any de any development money was in November. They are, now they are looking for the money for November, which is supposed to be released on a monthly basis. But uh, they were telling me that uh, they have been told to bring this, to bring that, to bring this, to bring that. And uh, we believe that it is happening, this this is happening because maybe there's no money in the treasury. Mm -hmm. 
So the national government is trying a kind of delay. But if it happens, the only time you can play the, the you can blame the county government is, for example, if the if the treasury or the national government decides to give each county its money. For example, your money is one billion for this month, and you are given on the first of that month. Yes. You are given one billion. Yes. In your commercial bank account. Mm -hmm. Then, if that money is not spent then you can really blame the county government. Right. But as of now, it really, it really doesn't happen that way. So this is a misconception from uh, the Treasury, Jonathan? I think it is. Uh, and, you know, Debal, how this thing works is the law is, is clear. All local generated revenues have to be swept immediately into the central bank account. All the money that the national government gives the counties in tranches on a monthly basis has to be put in the county's central bank account. Um, the balances you see the treasury talking about mm -hmm. are the balances in the central bank account because the, the the treasury has no capacity to go into all the commercial banks and find out if counties have money in there so the money they are talking about is in the central bank account that's one fact the second fact is the county governments get about 300 billion shillings every year mm -hmm. if you see the amount the treasury was talking about was 30 billion which means it's money just for about one month now i'll just ask you one question if you get paid your salary at the end of the month then the next day somebody tells you you're useless because you have not spent all your salary. Life doesn't work like that. So for me it's just sheer propaganda. The national government just needs to let the county governments continue with devolution. Mm -hmm. That's changing the lives of the people in this country. Instead of demonizing de de devolution and setting the people against the governors and the county governments. All right. So uh, we, we're talking about leadership and uh, delegation today. Just briefly. Uh, briefly, I should say, 30 seconds from you before we go to our international stories. Uh, how far has been your working relationships with your governors? Is it frosty? Has it improved? Of course, uh, from the beginning, it was a bit of a choppy water that we're, we're seeing. How is it? Let, let's hear from Gakure. Uh, for my case, uh, it's extremely unfortunate because uh, Moranga County it's, it's a one-man show, and, and I would never bring Kanaya when saying that. And uh, we've not had uh, proper delegation, uh, mm -hmm. duties and roles and responsibilities. Yes. And that is why you may find that uh, we are dysfunctional. Uh, leadership is, and delivery of results and management is uh, done through others. And when we get that uh, we, we don't work as a team, then the results won't come through. And clearly, Moranga is dysfunctional. And uh, unless there's change, uh, I would clearly say we have uh, not done much. We will be in air that uh, we advertise that we do a lot, but if you step foot in Moranga, the surprise that will hit you will be enormous. So there's a surprise? Yes. Okay. Let's hear from Abdi. Briefly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the bad relationship between governors and deputy governors have actually deteriorated in many counties, including my county, Wajia. As uh, he has put it, in many counties, the governors are running the counties as their family businesses, mm -hmm. as if it is it's just one man show, as he has said. They are just running as family businesses without involving the deputy governors in the day-to-day -day activities, without involving the other, without creating a teamwork or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very unfortunate that, uh, that uh, most counties started in such a footing. Mm -hmm. And actually, majority of them started in such a footing. Uh, and I don't know what, what can be done about it because uh, uh, leadership is about the leader. If the, if the leader does not uh, realize or does not recognize the importance of teamwork, does not recognize the importance of consultation, does not recognize the importance of delegation, and maybe thinks that he, he only knows everything or he's on, he only can do, can do the work or can, can, can run a county or can run a government, it is very unfortunate and that's what's happening in most of the counties. Uh, within uh, within Kenya now. Thank you. Let's hear from uh, Jonathan. Uh, yeah. uh, good, good leadership is a function of communication, uh, delegation, teamwork, uh, commitment, and a and, uh, few other attributes. Uh, the relationships between deputy governors and governors is different in, in, every, in every county. Uh, for us in Nairobi, we've been able to strike a working relationship uh, where the governor and I agree on what needs to be done. We agree on how to do it. Uh, we agree who's to do what, and we go ahead and execute. For us, we've seen it work. Uh, there's times where, of course, uh, people have different visions, but when you sit down and you communicate and you talk about it, uh, then you agree on which way you're going to take. Everybody feels that their interest has been taken care of, and you move on.
Uh, but I think what's most important with this is the, is the vision of the leader. Thank you. And if the vision of the leader really is to serve the citizens, uh, you can't serve the citizens by yourself. You have to build a team around you, and you have to work with that team around you. Otherwise, there's no way you're going to be able to deliver results. Thank you. So I can bet you, in the counties where you're having leadership problems, especially between the governors and the deputy governors, you're not going to see progress. It's just not possible. Fantastic. Thank you. And of course. Uh